great. So friends, let me know if this is the right angle or if I'm sideways again. So I'm gonna hang out here for a couple minutes before we start. So give me a thumbs up if I am at the right angle and we're good or if I need to rotate. Hi Tracy, thank you for being here today. So you saw when I was, ah, uh, am I sideways? Okay. I don't know what I'm doing differently because I didn't do anything from before. So let's see how I can fix it. Um, I don't know how to change it. Hmm. How can, that's okay. That's okay. I just wish I was better with all this technology and, um, hi George. So I'm sideways again. I'm trying to figure out how to not be sideways. Hmm. I don't know how to switch it. Hmm. Anybody out there know how I can fix it? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, how is that? Is that better? Hey, Courtney. This video uh, class stuff is challenging. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Becky and Michael. I know. I'm trying. So, <clears throat> is that better? All right. So give me a thumbs up if we're good. Am I side? I'm, not, I'm, I'm normal. Somewhat. Yes. Yay. Okay, good. We've got a few minutes still, so I will see if we have anybody else joining us. Is there anything in particular for today's practice that we want to focus on? got my props available so I always like to use blocks blankets um, so grab anything that you may need but move the camera to see the whole net okay um, uh -huh. is that better thank you for the input everybody I need help. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Okay. Hi, Mary Ellen. <clears throat> Better. Okay. Thank you, Tracy. All right. Good. Good, good, good. So I've got my blocks, my blanket. Anything we want to focus on today? Okay. Hi, Karen. All right, so it is just about that time. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, good morning. Thank you for being here with me today. And before we get to our yoga practice, I want to just talk a little bit about how we can keep our yoga practice with us at home, even if we're not on the mat as much as we'd like to be. Just keeping those simple things in mind in terms of our breath work, our meditation. So I really have been feeling the effects of 
not having a regular yoga practice and um, I was up all night last night I couldn't sleep and I'm just feeling really anxious with everything that's going on as many of you probably are as well so just remembering that in times when we do not have control over a lot of what's going on we can focus on the things that we do have control over so things like our breath work even if it's just five minutes taking time to breathe in and breathe out so remembering our counting of our breath our mantra our um that full deep belly breathing. So using some of those pranayama techniques can be really useful to help calm your nervous system, calm your mind, try to clear out some of that chatter and anxiety. So just keeping that in mind with our breath work as well as our meditation. Again, it doesn't have to be a full hour practice. Just taking a couple minutes, do what you can because those simple things can help you to find that peace and calm despite what is going on, okay? All right, so we are gonna go ahead and get started. I always like to start in a comfortable seat, um, so that's what I'm gonna do um, with lifting my hips up on a blanket. That's my favorite thing because we hold tension and tightness in our bodies in different places, our hips and our back are main places. So as you lift your hips up on that blanket, that helps to open them and release some of that tightness. So finding our comfortable seat here. All right, good, so everybody can still see me. So I've got my hips lifted up on a blanket. You can loosely cross your legs here, maybe take that half lotus position bringing your foot in a little bit closer. Just focus on anchoring. So we're grounding ourselves here as we take a few minutes to settle in and center ourselves. Let go of the stress, busyness, and distractions from our external world as we tune into and focus on our internal world. So you can close your eyes here and just notice how are you feeling in your physical body this morning? How are you feeling in your mental and emotional bodies? It's being an observer of those thoughts and feelings. And then bringing awareness to your breath. As you inhale, feel your belly expand. Feel your rib cage and your lungs expand. Feel your collarbones lift. Exhale, collarbones descend, ribs close in, pulling your navel to your spine. If you can, feel pulling it in and slightly up, activating Uddiyana Bandha. And maintain this full three-part breath throughout our practice today, our Durga breath. we breathe deeply here you can rest your hands on your lap palms down to feel more grounded palms up to feel more energized or taking any other mudra with your hands and then setting an intention the sankalpa think of what it is that brings you to the mat today what you would like to get out of this practice whatever your intention setting it now saying it to yourself three times You have one leg crossed in front of the other, switching sides. I'm just bringing the other leg on top. And then warming up our bodies as we connect our movement to our breath. Inhale, sweeping arms up overhead, and then exhale, pressing away. Feel active as you move through your arms and hands, feeling the energy here. And as we breathe, imagine inhaling happiness, health, peace, all of the things we want to bring into our lives. And as you exhale, releasing anything that is negative, anything that is not serving to you. 
Let's take one more full inhale and full exhale. Next inhale, lifting up and then over to the side. Relax your neck and your shoulder as you take your gaze up. And coming back up through center and then over to the other side. Again, nice stretch in our side body. Relaxing neck and shoulders and coming back up. Gentle twist. As you split your hands, you can bring one hand to your knee. One hand can reach for the mat behind you. Keep lengthening in your spine, in your breath. Maybe take your gaze over your shoulder. Inhale, coming back up. And then exhale over to the other side. Inhale, lift. And then circle your hands and your wrists. Bring them around in front of you and just give them a little stretch here, helping to warm up our hands and our wrists, preparing for our plank and down dog, and chaturanga. And then taking your hands, circle them in the other direction, interlace them behind your back. Inhale, heart lifts. And as you exhale, hinge forward. Take this as far as feels comfortable for you. And coming back up, sweeping arms up, bringing our hands to our heart in Anjali Mudra. As you pause here, feel energy pressing your hands to your heart. Come into your heart space. Again, think of your intention. And then making our way onto our hands, our knees, and our tabletop. Now having our blocks available at the front of our mat. Again, I like to use the blanket underneath of my knees for some support. And then we'll take a few cat and cow stretches here. So tuck your toes under, drop your belly, lift your head as you inhale, exhale, release your feet, round your back, scoop your belly. And just connect to your breath here at your pace, really stretching your upper back and shoulders. And we'll do one more, full inhale, full exhale. Coming back to our neutral spine. Let's extend our right leg straight back. Toes are on the mat at first as you press your heel back. So I do this to get a stretch through the back of my leg, as well as to help keep my hips square to the mat. Then reaching left arm out in front. And then you can stay here. You can add bringing that foot off of the mat. If you want to add hand and foot in opposite directions, or maybe bringing your elbow to your knee, just building a little bit of strength and stability in your core, in your powerhouse. So taking one more breath here, wherever we are, we'll come back to center as you lift up, looking up, maybe reach for your foot if that feels accessible to you. And then release your hand and step your right foot through into your low lunge. So pausing here in our low lunge, let's reach arms up. And then taking our temple mudra, lifting up and back slightly over to the right. Coming back up through center and to the left. And then bringing our hands to our heart, rest your forearm on your thigh, open up your left side. Take your hand maybe to your back for a half bind. And then release your hand to the block or to the mat, reach right arm up. Staying here, you can lift that knee off of the mat if you'd like. And then releasing as you take your right leg back, cross it over, look in the direction of your foot. Come back to center, 
Take your gaze over your right shoulder. And then back to your neutral spine, switching sides. Left leg extends straight back, toes are on the mat, hips are square, reaching right arm out, relax your neck and your shoulder, and then adding on where you'd like. If you want to take hand and foot in opposite directions, if you want to pull elbow to knee, Keeping your hips square to the mat. Keep that Uddiyana Bandha pulling your navel to your spine. So one more breath wherever we are here. Coming back to center, lifting up, looking up, maybe reaching for that foot. And then we'll release, stepping left foot through, coming into our low lunge. Gently press your hips forward, so stretching in our hip flexors and our quadriceps, and then reaching arms up, taking our temple mudras, we lift up and back slightly, over to the left, coming back up through center to the right, and then hands through heart, rest your forearm on your thigh, opening up that right side. If you took your half bind on the other side, maybe taking that here. Releasing your right hand to the block or to the mat, reaching left arm up. Maybe taking that knee off of the mat. And then releasing as that left leg comes back, cross it over, look in the direction of your foot. And then back to our table, gazing over your left shoulder. Your choice here. So building a little bit of strength, plank, kneeling plank. So maybe a few chaturanga push-ups, elbows hugging in by your sides. So do as much as you'd like here. And then we'll meet in our child's pose when you're ready. Remembering to stay hydrated, that's an important part of our health as well. Good. So when you are ready to find that Velasana, your choice, maybe knees come to the edges of the mat as you walk your arms out in front of you. Maybe your knees are closer together, arms can be by your side. Maybe you're taking that puppy pose with your hips lifted a little bit higher. Just finding that comfort and ease here in our resting pose. Remember, you can come here at any time throughout our practice. And as you are ready, lifting your hips up into our downward facing dog. As you lift hips up, pedal your heels into the mat. Maybe shake your head, yes and no. Let's take our right leg to the sky and release. And then left leg to the sky and back down. So do that a couple times. Keep your foot flexed, your leg is engaged, hips are square. So single leg raising up and then back down. So we'll do one more on each side. Then lift up onto your toes, send your weight forward into your plank or kneeling plank, elbows hug in, lower all the way down. Release in your back, your hips, and then bring your hands by your shoulders, inhale just Lifting up in a mini cobra, exhale down. Again, inhale, lifting up, exhale down. One more time, lengthen your low back and release. Elbows hug in, press up and back into your child's pose. 
If it feels okay for you to take a variation here, you can thread one arm underneath. Maybe take the opposite hand across to the outside edge of your mat. And if you're in that twist, taking that twist to the other side. And then coming back through center into our table, tuck your toes under, lift your knees an inch or two off of the mat, and then back down. So do that a couple of times. You're building some tapas, some heat. As you're ready, hips up. And then we'll walk our feet forward to our hands, hanging here in our forward fold, Uttanasana. Maybe a little sway. Maybe circling your hands and your wrists. Maybe having that block available. Let's bend both of our legs. Bring your chest towards your thighs. And then straighten. Again, bending both legs. And straighten. One more time. Bend both legs. Lifting up into our chair, Utkatasana. So feet are parallel, knees and thighs are parallel. Lengthen your low back, relax your neck and your shoulders. Connecting to our breath, inhale and exhale. Just let your breath guide your movement. Sitting back as much as you'd like, building strength and endurance. Strong in our legs, strong in our core, connected to our breath. Let's do one more. As you sit back in your chair, lift your toes off of the mat, give them a little wiggle. And then shift your weight forward, lift your heels off of the mat. Staying here, or maybe begin to straighten your legs and then lower back down. Then release your heels, hands to your heart, mini twist, knees are level, hips are level. Come back to center, mini twist. Back to center, now taking that twist a little bit deeper. As you take the outside of your elbow to the outside of your knee, you can split your hands. Again, that block can be available. Half bind, that hand comes at your low back. Full bind, if it's in your practice, or lifting up and balancing in our birds of paradise. And just take this wherever feels good for you. And then we'll come back to center, straighten your legs, and take that twist to the other side. Again, checking in that your knees are level. Often one knee wants to pop forward in front of the other. Keep lengthening in your breath as we cleanse our bodies and our twists. And then come back to center, straighten your legs, reach for elbows, gentle rock. Hold on to your elbows as we slowly roll up and over for standing Ardha Chandrasana variation. Root down through both feet and legs, inhale, lift up, and then over. To the other side. Inhale, lifting up. Let's release our arm. Take your gaze under your top arm. Look down at your hand. Then back up. And then other side. So energizing our lateral body. Continue to root down through both feet and legs. And then we'll do this one more time on each side if you'd like to add a little balance. 
taking that foot off of the mat. Interlace our hands behind our back or reach for your elbows. Inhale, lifting up, and then exhale, hinging forward. Soft bend in your legs. Release your hands and slowly rolling up. And we take a few circles with our shoulders, so releasing all of that stress and tension that we hold on to in our neck and our shoulders. I like to do some arm swings here. This is also really good for releasing anxiety. And then we'll find stillness in Tadasana in our mountain pose. So grounding down, feel that energy through your feet and your legs lengthen through the crown of your head and then close your eyes and just pause here noticing how you're feeling in your physical body mental and emotional bodies observing your breath it's finding that peace and stillness in our mountain pose connecting our movement to our breath inhale reaching arms up Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, halfway, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse. And hands to our heart. Let's take two more rounds of our half sun salutation. Move with your breath at your pace. One breath, one move. And then adding on, meeting in our downward facing dog. So your choice, you can flow through Chaturanga or come right there. So as you step back, you can step or hop, flowing through that cobra or up dog, and then meeting in our down dog. Taking our right leg to the sky, and then bend at your knee, kick your heel back. And coming back through center, hips are square, shift your weight forward into your plank, and then step your right foot through, left heel plants, warrior one. Our hips are square to the mat in our warrior one, and we wanna feel energy and grounding through our back foot and leg as well. So lifting up here, inhale, straighten your front leg, exhale, goal post arms, opening through the front of our body. Again, connect to your breath at your pace. We'll do one more. And then opening up into our warrior two. So in our warrior two, hips face the side wall. External rotation in your thigh. So press that leg back. Your knee is tracking over first and second or second and third toe. So breathing here. Let's reach forward and find our side angle. Top arm overhead, extended side angle. And coming back up through our warrior two and reverse warrior. So just flow here a few times at your pace. And then we'll find our fullest expression of that side angle. So maybe reaching for the inside of your foot for that block maybe framing your face engaging your core 
Again, if you've got that half bind or full bind in your practice, just breathing here. We'll come back up through our warrior two, straighten your front leg, reach and reverse. Cartwheeling hands down to the mat, pause in your low lunge. Option one, stay here. Option two, lifting up for a twist. Option three, taking side plank. And then we'll all meet in our downward facing dog. Again, flow through chaturanga, taking that plank or kneeling plank, cobra or up dog, or meeting right in down dog. Remembering that child's pose is always available. When you're ready, left leg to the sky. So straight back, foot is flexed, hips are square. Bend at your knee as you kick your heel back. And then straighten your leg, move through your plank, pause, and then stepping left foot through, right heel plants, warrior one. Take your time, find your balance, hips are square to the front of the mat. As we lift up, looking up, feeling we are strong and powerful warriors. Connecting to our breath, inhale, straighten, Exhale, goal post arms. Really feel using those back muscles to open up here through your chest and your shoulders. We'll do one more. And then opening up into Virabhadrasana 2. Hips are square to the wall now. Warrior one, front of the mat. Warrior two, to the side wall. External rotation, protecting our knee, and then breathe. Find that balance, stira and sukha, effort and ease. Reaching forward, finding that side angle. Top arm overhead, extended side angle. And then use your core as you lift up through warrior two and reverse warrior. Again, flow with your breath at your pace. And then we'll all meet in our side angle your fullest expression of side angle for today. Maybe taking it a little bit further, using our blocks. And coming back up through our warrior two, straighten your front leg, reach and reverse. Cartwheeling hands down to the mat, pausing here in your low lunge. So back heel stays up. You can add the twist. You can add your side plank. And then we'll meet in our downward facing dog. Again, flowing through or coming right there. Your choice, your practice. Make it your own and do what feels best for you. So any balance requests for today? I always like to ask in my classes if you have any requests for balance. And I miss being with you guys. It's really different teaching to an empty studio. So thank you for being here with me. What do you think? Any balance requests? All right. So let's do, let's, so from our down dog, let's take our right leg to the sky, move through 
your plank. Stepping that right foot through. We'll lift up into our high crescent lunge. And then taking our warrior three. So toes can stay on the mat. This can be our balance here. You can bring that back leg up. You can use your blocks. If you'd like to take half moon, rotating in your hip. So your choice, just knowing that we receive the benefit from working on our balance, no matter where we are. So we can be using the blocks, we can use the wall. Stay steady in your breath. And then wherever we are, let's all come up, bringing that left knee in. You can stay right here or maybe reach left arm back. And then go ahead and release, shake it out. Good. So setting up for our balance on the other side, flowing through Chaturanga or coming right to our down dog. Meeting with that left leg to the sky. Move through your plank and then stepping through. Take your time, find your balance, high crescent lunge. And as we make our way into that warrior three, you can keep your hands at your heart. You can do some toe taps if you want to add on. Having the blocks available, maybe taking that half moon. If you took that on the other side, externally rotate. Just focusing on our breath. The steadier our breath is, the steadier our balance will be. And then we'll all meet, bringing that right knee in. If you want to add, reaching that right arm back. And then release. Shake it out. Grab some water. All right. And then we will set up for making our way back down to the mat. So flowing through or coming right to your down dog. Once we get there, right leg to the sky. Bend at your knee, kick your heel back. If you want to flip, you can flip, lifting hips up. And then we'll all meet in our pigeon. So right ankle to your left wrist. And if this does not feel good, we can take reclined pigeon lying down on our back. So look at how your props can support you here. I can be lifted up higher with the blocks underneath of my hands. I can place the blanket right underneath of my hip, I could fold forward over the blocks or blanket. So just feeling that your hips are square to the mat, your back leg is straight. So inhale, lengthen, create space, and then walk your hands out in front of you. Focusing on your breath here in this intense pose. I am breathing in and I am breathing out. Pigeon pose is a really good one for us. I'm trying to stay here a little bit longer.
slowly walking your hands up, gently looking up, maybe looking in the direction of your foot or reaching for your foot. And then meeting in our downward facing dog. So your choice, flowing through or coming right there. Pedal your heels into the mat. Left leg to the sky, straight back, bend at your knee. And if you flipped on the other side, flipping here, lift hips up. And then we'll all meet in our pigeon. So left ankle to your right wrist. And take your time, find your alignment. One side may feel different than the other. Use your props to support you. Inhale. And exhale. we let go of all the stress and tension that we're holding on to in our bodies. Maybe repeating, I am inhaling peace. I am exhaling any worry or anxiety. If your head doesn't reach the mat and use those props, you can be lifted up higher here. Just settling in a little bit longer so that we can really let go of all that stress and tension that we hold on to. Physical stress, mental and emotional stress. And then slowly walking your hands up, looking up, maybe looking in the direction of your foot or reaching for your foot. And then bringing our legs around in front of us. Taking the soles of our feet together. Inhale, lengthen in your spine. And then as you hinge forward, try to keep your back flat as long as you can. Maybe gently pressing elbows into your legs. And then you can let your head hang in your background as you fold forward. And then as you're ready, coming up, let's take our legs out in our wide-legged V, Upavista Konasana. Again, maybe having blocks available or having some props. So this can be an intense pose right here, but a good one for us, releasing some tension in our legs, our hips, our back. And so as we make our way into this forward fold, you may not go very far and that's okay. Just focus on your breath. So first starting with that tall spine, inhale, lengthen, and then exhale, just slowly starting to walk your hands out in front of you. And you can bring your hands to the blocks or whatever props that you have at home. You can bring your head there. And just try to breathe here for several deep breaths. Our forward folds energetically are calming to both our bodies and our minds. So just trying to keep that in mind. So not striving to Move deeper into the pose, not forcing anything, just letting your breath take over and help create space. Walk ourselves up, 
Take your hands behind you, look up, shake out your feet and your legs a little bit. And then go ahead and bring that right leg in, giving it a little rock. Placing your foot down. Inhale, lengthen in your spine. And then exhale as you twist in the direction of your leg. So I've got my right leg, whatever leg you have, twisting in that direction. And then coming back through center, taking a counter pose, just fold over to the left side and then pressing back up. And now let that right knee come down to the mat. As we fold forward over our left leg, maybe having a strap available. So we're rooting down through our sits bones. Inhale, lengthen in your spine. Exhale, hinging forward. Wherever your hands reach here, whether it's the blocks, your foot, your leg, using the straps. And then taking your right arm up and over for a little side body stretch. And then release, lifting up for a counter pose. You can stay here or continue pressing hips up. And then slowly coming back down and switching sides. So take that left leg, give it a little rock. And placing that foot down. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist. Twisting to the left. Keep breathing deeply. And we'll come back through center, taking that counter pose to the other side. Let your knee open up, so coming down to the mat and having straps or props available, inhale, reach, and then folding forward. Taking your left arm up and over, And then taking your counter pose. So you can just lift that right arm up or maybe continue pressing hips up. And then let's release. So we make our way back down to the mat. We'll do one Navasana here, both pose. So lengthen in your spine, maybe having those props available. You can keep your toes right here on the mat. You can bring your legs up if you want to do a twist. So any variation, we're building that strength in our solar plexus chakra in our powerhouse. So one more breath here, wherever we are. Inhale, lifting hips up, reverse table, and exhale down. Two more, lifting up. And then having a seat in Dandasana in our staff pose. Inhale, exhale, fold. Again, letting your hands fall wherever they reach here. Lengthen, root down through your sits bones. Visualize your breath as it travels across the back side of your body, up and down your spine, and then slowly make your way all the way down to the mat. Whole body stretch when you get there. And then hugging knees in. You can reach for your feet, rocking in happy baby.
And then let's take the soles of our feet together and just take a couple of deep breaths here in the Supta Baddha Konasana, reclined bound angle, releasing in your legs, your stomach, your hips, your back. You can place both hands over your belly and just feel your hands rise and fall with your breath. Maybe placing one hand over your heart and one hand over your belly. Just feeling grateful for our breath. Grateful for our bodies. Grateful for this practice today. And then taking your arms out in a T and drop your knees over to the right. So you can use your hand to assist you here. You can take your gaze over your shoulder if you want to go for a little bit more, maybe reaching for that bottom foot or your top leg. back up, taking that twist to the other side. So any of those options that you explored on the other side, doing them here. Maybe thinking of those things that you would like to cleanse from your body, physical, mental, emotional bodies. Letting go of whatever those things are that are not serving to you. And coming back up to center, hug your knees into your chest. And then taking an inversion. So your choice may be taking our bridge pose as you lift your hips up. You can take a supported bridge pose, lifting up onto the block. If you'd like to take legs up, if you have shoulder stand or wheel or any other inversion in your practice, it's taking time to do that now. All of our inversions help to reduce stress, anxiety, depression. They help to relieve headaches, improve our sleep, as well as boost our immunity. And then finishing up with whatever stretches or adjustments feel good to you before I guide you through a little bit of our final relaxation. All right. So as you are ready to find Shavasana, our final relaxation and the most important part of our practice is let your legs come out to the edges of the mat arms by your side about a foot out from your body palms up open and receiving all the benefits of our work today and just close your eyes just feeling completely relaxed as you scan your body, notice if you're still holding on to any tension or tightness. Could you be 5 or 10% more comfortable? Relax your face, your neck and shoulders. Soften your jaw. Relax your mouth and your tongue. Let your eyes sink back into their socket. Feeling peaceful, feeling content. Maybe notice if there is a shift in your mental and emotional bodies since first beginning your practice today. Maybe thinking of your intention that you had set. 
carry that intention with you as you go out into the rest of your day, into the rest of your week. I'm just taking a few minutes here, just breathing, soaking up all the benefits. This is the most important part. And acknowledge that even though we are trying to still our minds, calm our bodies, that we can never completely turn our minds off. And that's okay. Letting those thoughts wander through, but let them go. No judgments, no attachments. Just focusing on our breath. I'm breathing in and I'm breathing out. Maybe repeating that mantra or intention that you had set. you are ready to come back, find your comfortable seat here with me. Just taking your time. And then bringing our hands to our heart. Feeling love and gratitude for taking the time to honor and nourish our body, mind, and spirit today. Thank you for being here with me and letting me guide your practice. The light in me sees and honors the light in you. Namaste. Friends, I hope you have a great day and you found this practice useful. Keep that peace and stillness despite what is going on. Um, as always, I welcome any questions, comments. Um, I will probably do a more restorative and gentle practice for tomorrow if you're interested. And um, have a great day. Thank you.